Leadership remains the central enabler of all human development efforts, whether from the traditional setting to the national, continental, uh, or even global level. Every human development effort requires the effective or most excellent leadership driven by teamwork and discipline. With this introductory remark, it's my singular pleasure to once again welcome you to the Leader Leadership 360 show. We are live on Metro TV and on Facebook at Metro TV Ghana. I am your regular host, Dr. Victor Abe. Today, we're going to talk about leadership and discipline with a special guest, as we did last week. Just stick around. Let's take a quick message from our sponsors, and we shall be right back. Guys, now I'm tired. I'll go on a date with whoever gets here first. Princess, really? Okay. Are they come? Shut Boss, fill my tank with Super XP Run 95. Fill up with Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP High Performance Products from Goyle. <laughs> Sorry, Tony got here first, so I'm stepping with him. Oh, cut him, cut him. Hey! Go for that boy, do what, mommy? Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Go. Welcome back, cherished viewers. Special appreciation to our viewers over the period, the past seven weeks, especially those on the Leadership 360 platform. It's been amazing and it's been, you know, great having the feedback from you, the appreciation, the gratitude for the program we are running. The aim is very clear for us to learn, unlearn, and relearn to accelerate the growth or sustainable development of our societies at large. Today, as indicated, we are going to be talking about leadership and discipline. Last week, we spoke about leadership by example. Linked directly to that is discipline, because for you to be able to demonstrate leadership by example, you must be able to you know, discipline yourself and your team at large. Today, we have a special guest by all definition. He can be described as an amazing person. He is a security and leadership, security risk leadership and management consultant. He is a military veteran, an international peacekeeper. In fact, if we want to go on and systematically talk about his profile, I think it will overshadow the conversation for today. Cherished viewers, we have on set today Major Dr. Dr. Ebenezer Pachi Ajiman. Doc, you are welcome. Thank you very much, Victor. It's, it's great having you on the show. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here too. And I thank you for the invitation. And I also want to say hi to all viewers and listeners. That's great. We are great to have you. We are thank happy. You. We are excited. I think. When the flyer was made, a lot of people, the feedback we got was, I want to hear from the, the, the major doctor, doctor, to tell us about discipline. Yeah. You know, it is, so you're going to help us to dissect the issues relating to leadership uh, and discipline. And you have interestingly written a book about leadership and discipline. Yes. 
which fe featured on the show uh, some two weeks back. And it's amazing having you around. You know, it's been said that for leaders to be effective, they must have discipline. And on this show, we also believe that it is interesting that the essence of leadership is to hold oneself accountable no. and the team accountable. That's correct. Otherwise, um, there is no leadership. And for that to happen, the leaders must be able to, while holding themselves and their teams accountable, they must also take care of their needs and aspirations of their people. You are from a military background, a military uh, veteran. It's also said from your military circles. Uh, I must say I am equally a military veteran, but at this point, I am wearing a purely traditional dress to ensure that I reserve all the right for Major to talk about all those stuff. So in military circles, it is said that discipline is the soul of the army. It makes teams formidable, and it makes you know, high-level thinking possible and possibilities possible, yeah. or impossibilities possible. possible. That is what the military believes That's in. That's correct. Because with discipline, you can conquer everything. So we want to have your perspective quickly sure. about leadership and discipline. Thank you very much. Uh, I should think that before we move on, we should, we need to set some context right. All right. Remember, across the broad that you started doing this data set 360, you've been talking about the environment in which you operate. Sadly. And interestingly, this environment has been seen to be volatile, has been seen to be uncertain, has been seen to be complex, has been seen to be, uh, what do you call it? Um, ambiguous. ambiguous. So that gave us the VUCA concept. All right. But as you rightly to know, and as people have really read about it and also conceptualized, now we're shifting from the normal VUCA to what we call the bunny environment. Exactly. Where the environment is brittle, the okay. environment is also anxiously made for people who don't know where to, what to do and where to go. Again, the whole circumstance around ourselves are non-linear, and finally, it's also incomprehensible. That gives us the bunny concept. However, before we can deal with leadership, we need to also have certain additional VUCA which can be the foundation for which we will build our conversation. And this VUCA looks at vision, looking at understanding, looking at clarity, and also looking at what we call agility. And so this concept of agility, which will premise our discussion on discipline. If you want to have enduring leadership and enduring conversation about society and sustenance of things that leaders do. It's amazing, Doc, that you have brought to the fore what we have established to a very large extent sure. um, on this show, the context in which, or the environment we are operating, the global space. Sure. And it's also very critical for me to indicate that you mentioned the VUCA and the BANI, the BANI world, the vision, the understanding, the clarity, and the agility. Yes. Very excellent. What it means for me, by and large, is that for us to progress steadily, towards any sustainable uh, development agenda, we need to have vision. We need to have clarity around the environment we're operating and then be flexible in our thinking so that at any point in time, we'll be able to adapt to the changing uh, the times. Is, yes. Perfect. So now you have contextualized the issue. We all understand for viewers. I want us to take it step by step so that we get the understanding. Let's proceed steadily by asking you, Leaders, can you give us a gist of what leaders do? Thank you very much. If we check the fundamental definition, either from the trade definition, from the process definition, or from any contextual definition, leaders are supposed to do some few things. Number one is that leaders are supposed to motivate. Secondly, leaders are supposed to make decisions. And leaders are supposed to also coach their followers. Additionally, leaders are supposed to innovate so they can bring change to the environment they are operating. Leaders are supposed to influence, which is critical, because we are saying that a leader must influence people, guided by his objective to achieve a certain end state. The next one is leaders must set examples. Which leaders, we, we discussed. Yes, the uh, other time. Yes. And leaders must also build trust. 
And leaders must also get results. And finally, leaders must also leave legacies. The legacy side is what most leaders don't look at. The legacy can be positive, it can be negative. It can be short-lived, it can be short-term, it can be enduring, or it can be sustaining. This comes back to what leadership and discipline can bring about wow. in ensuring these things are done, okay. especially the trust issue, the resource issue, and the legacy side of leadership, which we need to understand from the perspective as we discuss here. Right. So what basically it means is that leaders ensure that what is set out for the team to achieve or for the organization to achieve is achieved through their coaching, their uh, setting example, their personal um, example that would demonstrate that it is possible. And at all times, they must keep when even morale is going low, low. they must motivate, motivate, they must inspire to get people to the their destination. destination. So now, you mentioned in getting results, it requires a certain you know, behavioral um, space. space, which I believe includes discipline. That's correct. What is discipline? See, when you talk about discipline, people look at it from the negative perspective. The person has committed an offense and they want to maybe to take corrective measures. No. Discipline is basically instinctive obedience to instructions or order. And it comes from training and it comes from sacrifices and it comes from personal commitment. So for example, let's start from the family level. Discipline starts from the family because individuals will come from various homes. As a father, if the child is supposed to do a job or a chore at home and he fails to do it, what does the father do? Go to their school level. The school has rules and regulations that people might adhere to. The, the, the student goes to school and doesn't obey the rules and regulations, what happens? Again, come to maybe government, state level, even come to even the church or religious levels. Even for you to be successful, discipline must run through. Because discipline also entails sacrifices and also accepting pain for the better gain tomorrow. Tomorrow. All right. So what it means is that discipline has two folds. Yes. Compliance with rules, rules and reward and punishment. Reward and punishment. That is basically so what the fundamental issue is this. The initial issue about discipline is not about punishment. Exactly. It's about rewarding and motivating people to imbibe or to accept what you want to put across. So, that is so why. Let me cut in here and sure. say, will you agree when somebody also say that discipline is equivalent to integrity, where by doing the right thing, even if nobody is looking at you, or when nobody is even looking at you, you do the right thing. Yes. Will you agree to that? I agree to that. But the interesting thing is this. Discipline is a foundation for character. Discipline is a foundation for trust. For example, we are supposed to meet here, I mean, maybe tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. You're supposed to be the host. I come here at 7 o'clock. You're not calling me. You'll be here by 7.30. You begin to trick more or less... Um, in danger, the trust are having you. So there are basic, basic things that as people must begin to understand. I don't want to look at it from the bigger perspective, but the personal level, what are we doing individually? So collectively, if we come together within a team, we can build the trust, we can build the character, we'll be able to have the vision and the mission and the objective of the leader or the society achieved. Okay. That's critical. I'm happy you're looking at, you cited the example of um, time consciousness. Very well. So within our society, within the African context, within the global space, yes. and within the context of our sustainable development um, agenda, what would you say are some of the basic things that can inure to our benefit with regards to discipline? What you Practical example. What you interesting must get is this. All of us are not endowed with the same resources. But interestingly, everybody is endowed with the same time. The 24 hours is open to everybody. Beautiful, handsome, ugly, rich or poor. So how you use your time also have relationship of how you achieve your objectives. If we check, some contractors may give you maybe a project. I will finish in six months time and the person finishing in three years thereafter. If you go and even do interrogation, you could check 
that you're not consistent and also respecting their time as the program, the program was going on. So it's important that we don't dissociate discipline for everything that we do because if you fail to adhere, the time will not wait for you and naturally you are likely to be negatively impacted okay. at the end of the day. All right. So what I want to actually touch on in addition to that has to do with if you look at our society in general vis-a-vis yeah. -vis discipline, the, what we have this, defined it to be as adherence to regulation or procedures or processes or what have you and a certain of you know punishment or rewarding what do you see and what do we need to do about it there are certain things about discipline that we need to understand number one is this if you are disciplined then you also adhere to your values okay. for every environment every society every organization is built on values ethics and norms and this will form into the culture so without discipline and adherence to values there's a likelihood you may have a very negative culture which will even impact uh, productivity efficiency and excellence the other way we must look at that discipline is a rule flowing behavior you can't come to this place they say everybody must wear trousers then you alone you come here with maybe shorts or everybody must wear sneakers and you come here with a shoe. Even check the athletic environment. How many people are allowed to run with normal shoes? Because that area has specific code of dress that everybody must adhere to. The other thing you must know is this. Discipline also adherence, also respecting regulations. Okay, so what it means is that once the rules are set, yes. everybody across board, whether you are the leader, you are the team member, you are whoever, adherence to the rules and regulations and readiness to hold oneself accountable sure. plays a key role. But the interesting thing about leadership is this. As you said in the prior discussion, leadership is supposed to set the right examples. Exactly. So the followers will by all means copy, quote unquote, your behavior and replicate as the days go by. Go by. That will form the behavior and it will form the culture of the environment in okay. which you operate. So what we see across board in our society yes. where we we all complain about one thing or the other that leaders or the systems rate are not doing the right thing it could be an issue of leadership and indiscipline fundamental but one critical thing is this you see culture is built on certain conditions or certain behavior or certain characters across board so fundamental issue is this. Yeah. We are not adhering to the basics. Cleanliness, respect, humility, adherence. These are basic things that for me doesn't need governments even to initiate. It comes from the individual community level. Then together forms and builds into the government, the state, and even to the international community. Right. So that means we are gradually heading to how the individual can instill discipline into him or herself yes. to guarantee our road to success. That's correct. Or sustainable development. Very well. We shall revisit that, uh, continue that conversation okay. when we come back. But before we take a break, viewers, let me use the let me use the opportunity to say that uh, on this show, our aim is to you know open up the conversation around critical issues affecting our sustainable development, our leadership efforts, our teamwork uh, challenges. And so what we are trying to do this afternoon is that the issue of leadership and discipline is critical to our very sustainable development as a people, as a continent, and even as families. So it's very important for us to do that. Let me use the opportunity to appreciate and congratulate uh, RCC intake 43 and that's a uh, regular career course 43 and special duties course 42 for 20th anniversary launch that is coming up on the 20th of this month. It's amazing how far the Lord has brought us. That is my intake. Cherished viewers, we have paid our dues and the Lord has granted us life and we are happy to celebrate and continue to contribute more to society. 
Thank you. And um, I will continue with Doc. Let's go back to our conversation. Sure. Self-discipline, that is individual base. Yes. What is it? And then how can we, you know, individually get ourselves disciplined? Thank you. Let me just a take a step back. You see, discipline starts from the onset or starts from the time we are even born or to this world. So parents are supposed to begin to imbibe discipline to their children. As we grow, you are supposed to be relatively independent that you can control and also take decisions, independent decisions, outside the control of your parents. But as you move on, you could see that certain parts of our behavior comes to people forcing us to be disciplined. However, if you want to move on to have sustainable development, then self-discipline is critical. And here, exactly. we see that it is our ability or willingness to control our feelings and also overcome our weaknesses. How do you mean? What I mean by is this. Left to every person alone, you will allow to be asleep and wake up 9 p.m. or 7 p.m. or 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. But you are supposed to come to work at 8 o'clock. So what do you do? You should have the ability and willingness to overcome that. What is your weakness? Identify it. Naturally, nobody wants to be forced to work or everybody will love that maybe you wake up, maybe money will come from the ceiling and you can begin to spend it. But that weakness might be overcome. So your ability is that. So it means that dif discipline requires some high degree of sacrifice. And that's critical. And in our environment, the problem is that most of us we are speaking much about indiscipline, but ourselves, we are not ready to sacrifice a bit for the betterment of ourselves, our society, our community, and even for the state. Yes, in as much as I agree that discipline and sacrifice are related, I also want to say that if it's about adherence to rules, then where comes the sacrifice? The issue is this. We are looking at me, for example, for going a pleasure today for the benefit of tomorrow. That will be saying that discipline is how you go through pain for today, then you get some joy or benefit tomorrow. So, so in as much as it is not convenient, it's not, yes. comfortable, it's not comfortable to you, for the better good of the society, larger society, society, you are supposed yes. to let go some yes. comfort for the better good of society. That is sacrifice right. and that is discipline. So if there is traffic and I can use the sideways and go and everybody will follow and we'll end up creating traffic, more traffic on the roads, I need to understand that the problem will be bigger, bigger than me. But yes, sir, in the future. In the future. So you must have the sacrifice to stay in the lane, have the patience to wait, have the patience to be guided by the police service, then follow through with the lane demarcated. Don't create a comfort for yourself, because at the end of the day, sometimes you will lead by indiscipline and create a major problem okay. ahead for society eventually. All right. So we need to do that. Sacrifice. So you mentioned, so we need to understand our own feelings, yes. which has a lot to do with um, emotional intelligence as That's well. Correct. That's correct. That in the face of adversity, for you to be disciplined, yes. you must get to understand your own feelings, your yes. own emotions, yes. to be able to control your, your emotions yes. or regulate what yes. you do yes. at any point in yes. time. Thank you. But now let's move on to, <clears throat> you just mentioned knowing oneself, which I have vividly linked to uh, emotional intelligence. What other ways can we ensure that we instill self-discipline into ourselves? One other thing is that the individual must be willing to obey. Okay. Nobody should force you. You must be willing as an individual within the society to obey. The other one is that you must also have self-control. Because, for example, you go to a banking hall. You only you met some number of customers and it's like because, quote-unquote, you are a very respectable, known individual. You want to jump the queue. No. Control self. The other one is that discipline can also be acquired through training. So across board, at home, it can be formal, informal. Discipline can be acquired. And we said about leadership. Leaders also, may also mentor people, coach people, and let them also follow them by leading by example. So by example, people can copy that behavior yes. and become disciplined. Discipline. And 
Uh -huh. Talking about discipline learning, it's getting interesting. Viewers, I am personally uh, getting into <coughs> the conversation, enjoying every bit of it. I just want to ask, we know that discipline in the military, do before complain. So people are civilians, but immediately they get into the military and come out. They are seen differently. What is it that the military does that makes people conform to certain rules? And they say it's, it's by force. Uh, why is this? What, what is the secret here? It is not necessarily by force, but as I said, it's instinctive obedience to instruction or order or regulation. In the military, you, you go in as a civilian, but they need to retool you, recondition you, and prop you up so that you can fit into society. There are certain things that you, have, you were taking for granted, military doesn't take for granted. For example, even haircuts, when you wake up, how you dress your bed, how you iron your uniform, how you shine your boots, how you even dress up, how you even speak. So all these things are critical. They we call it minute ingredients, but they come together to form a bigger behavior pattern, which becomes instinctive. Would the same man tells you, please, everybody wake up or uh, stand up. Instinctively, you will stand up. So it becomes part and parcel because of Because associated with that, it's a reward punishment side for indiscipline. But with time, when they get to understand that for you, you have been able to understand what they are talking about, they will leave you. And self-discipline will kick in. That's where you see military people. Sometimes they stand or they look differently and they behave differently because the instinctive application of what has been learned over a period is now kicking in. It becomes re relatively automated, sort of. So military has that ability to turn things around for you to understand that the better good of society is greater than the individual good of that particular of person society. we are talking about. Thank you very much. Uh, so far, we have made very, very, very great uh, submissions. Personally, I want to believe that is bringing our minds to the fore or to it has mirrored a lot of things that probably we've been taking for granted. Viewers, let's take a quick break. And we shall be right back. Ohima, you know me here taking number first, but you, you have to be sitting in number two. Guys, now I'm tired. I'll go on a date with whoever gets here first. Princess, really? Okay, are they come? Shut Boss, fill my tank with Super XP Run 95. Fill up with Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP High Performance Products from Goyle. Sorry, Tony got here first, so I'm stepping with him. Oh, Hey! Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Go. Welcome back, viewers. It's been interesting so far. We have touched on the fact that we are in a world where everything is moving so fast, the complexity or the brutal nature of it, nothing is moving in a linear pattern, and we need to have vision, we need to have understanding, clarity, and flexibility of mind, which links to uh, self-discipline and leadership discipline at large. Let's quickly open the full lines before we con continue the conversation. You can reach and contribute to this discussion on 0531-982298. 0531-982298. If you are out of Ghana, you can just add plus 233. Plus 233, and you will be able to contribute to 
the discussion we are having. Now, Doc, we have, you know, largely covered the different perspectives of leadership and discipline. But I want us to narrow down to uh, one, one, one of the aims for this program. But before I come to that, there's a caller on the line. Mohamed from Tamale, good afternoon. Yeah, good, good evening, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Mohamed. Yeah, How is I'm Tamale very glad too? that you brought a military man, uh, a military expert in your uh, to your studio. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I have a, in our we I'm a teacher, and we teachers we believe in uh, uh, extroverts. We like teaching extroverts. And extroverts are active. They always ask questions and inquire to know more. But introverts, teachers don't like introverts because you don't know whether they know, they, they, they have, they, they have uh, gotten what you taught them or not. So, and it affected me. When I was a young person, where, you know, during the revolution, they said we should do military training. I was, my name was sent you, to Accra. If, uh, I was Mohamed, sent to, Mohamed, yes. please, if you can wrap up, if you can okay. uh, wrap and it I up for us. I to learn there. And when my name was brought to Malfour, Tamale, Barracks, then they said that the way I, I question, the way I have been questioning people, I can't be a military man. That because they don't want people who question. That do before you complain. And that one prevented me from going for the military training. So I'm very happy that you brought him. That is my problem. All Thank right. You. All right. I guess you have made a point that, um, to some extent, the introverts and extroverts have different traits. And the extroverts tend to be questioning almost everything that they are asked to do. And so that actually is your question. Uh, Doc, what will you say about that? Yeah, I, 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 sh I share his concern. However, the military also looks at people who are ready and willing to obey right from the scratch. So, for example, you're a civilian, you went to the, you went to the barracks, there's certain lane that we don't even walk on or areas that we don't even sit. Or there's a reason why they say stand in the sun, reason why they say run in the afternoon, reason why they deny you food. You are asking them to give you, quote unquote, Food. Food. Or why are you because from, you are from mm -hmm. the university or you are from a good home where you give three, you eat three times a day and stuff like that. So when those traits comes up, military has a way to identify that sometimes training you becomes difficult or if they don't let you go, there's a high likelihood you may pollute the other people. Oh, quote unquote. Right. So that kind of uh, I, is I, there, but I my guess thinking we'll, is we'll come back, we'll come we'll back, come to, back that. To, to, so to that. So I'm sorry that you didn't get to the military, but thank God uh, you also went to the teaching field and you also impacted and made contribution and created yourself to be a very good leader. So that's what we're looking at. Everybody playing a role, but ensuring that at the end of the day, the national good is it's, greater all right. than the personal good. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Um, now back to what I was going to ask, but there is uh, Opoku on the line. So, Opoku from Sotom. Good Hello. afternoon. Somenya, Somenya Rada. Good afternoon. Yeah, 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 good afternoon. Hi, Somenya. Yeah, Somenya is good. And my name is Dr. Kwabina Opoku Menza. Your name again, and, uh, please. My name is Dr. Kwabina Opoku Menza. Oh, Doc. Welcome yes, to uh, Leadership uh, Crisis Show. Your yeah, contribution, um, please. Thank you for the nice program, and thank you for bringing my brother and my mates, my brother, my mates, uh, uh, at Legon. And I admire him so much for the books he's written on this discipline and all that. And then the discussion that you're having is very useful. When it comes to discipline or indiscipline, I think that is the crux of our pro problem in the country. Right from the cleanliness to the top of those at the helm of our face, our major pro problem is indiscipline. But if you are own discipline at our own corners, I think we'll be able to make a headway as a nation. So Major Richard, Dr. Ibn Zakwa Chajman has written that book, and he's done so well as an ex-military officer, taking it upon himself to 
crusade for discipline among us as a people. All right. I think that, that, that's a major, a major uh, crusade is taking it upon himself. And I want to congratulate him. And also to thank you for bringing this issue for discussion. Thank, thank you. you very much. We are grateful on the Leadership 360 show. Our aim is just to make our societies better than we have met it and we are in now. So your contribution, my contribution, and everybody's contribution is very important towards uh, on the journey to greatness. So Doc, let's go back um, to the essence of discipline in our overall sustainable development agenda. What is it that we can do? Quick comment. Yeah, Doc, what I think must also know that as indicated earlier, Leaders leave legacies, and these legacies are normally not uh, focused by leaders. They say, I have an objective. When I finish my objective, I finish my, what I want to do, I'm leaving. But what legacy are you going to leave, and do you want that legacy to be enduring? That's a fundamental issue we must look at. For example, a family may have um, a father who is well-to-do. At the demise or at the death of the father, everything the father does crumbles. Check even family businesses. Research has shown most of them don't even cross their 10th anniversary. Some businesses, as we speak today, have collapsed because the one who brought the vision has died. So as a people, it's important that we begin to look at what can we do by training, by building legacies, by being sustaining approaches in ensure that people take over, people understand, first and foremost, our vision, and we train them to trust that when we are not there, well, leaders must have replacements. Huh? And in African continent, African context, most of the leaders do not grow replacements. All right. Just hold it there. Host Ami from Nima. Good afternoon. Hey, Doc, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you too? Oh, my is this. You are fine. Thank God for another, another Thursday. Yes, yeah, so, and yes, uh, your contribution? Last, last I called on your, on your, on your I mean, your, 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 your repeat program. And <laughs> Uh, I thought it's a live, live program. Thank you very much for this leadership program. I think leadership, leadership has been a problem, I mean, from our society up to our governance level. I think it's good you are dealing with this thing. Uh, I want to ask for leadership, social transformation, personal responsibility and passion, conviction and confidence. How does this, do these four things have in common if it comes to leadership? Thank you very much. Thank you too. Doc. Thank you, my brother who called. Remember, at the end of the day, leadership is a personal issue. So first and foremost, you should be convinced yourself that you can lead. That's where leaders have a lot of traits that have been discussed prior to this discussion. I don't want to go into that detail, but the point is this. Your conviction, your legacy, your trait and all will lead to change at the end of the day. So what change do you intend to bring to the society when at the end of the day you finish your process? And do you want that change to be sustaining or that change to die away? A lot of people were very vibrant. Their names were seen and read about every time. They died and the quote unquote, they are no more. It means that the legacies or the objective they set for themselves were not, was not sustaining enough was not protected enough, and the people were not trained. So is it, is it also about their personal objective, or it is the team's objective? There are two things. The context will not determine which leadership style you are talking about or what you want to do. But for me, leaders must build their objectives and their transformation through teams. All right. Robert from Cape Coast, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You are welcome to the Leadership 360 Show. Oh, uh, thank you very much this uh, afternoon for educating us on the leadership. And uh, I want to that uh, Hello. this leadership to bring from the top to the ground. Our leaders, political leaders, and all of us involved. Because look at the coverages, look at the flood. We throw things about. We are not disciplined enough. But our resources in this country, we still take leadership and everybody, especially our governance. It should be enough 
of our governors to hold discipline responsible in our at at all right. governor. Please be snappy for us so that other, we have a lot of callers uh, calling in so that we can get uh, as many people through as possible. Thank you much. To run up, I would say the discipline should start for, right now from the president to the ordinary man in this country. It should be, we should, we should be disciplined enough. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. But let me, before I give the floor to Doc, let me quickly say that on this program, what we believe is that we are all potential leaders. We all have leadership within us. And in our own small corners, we need to lead by example. We need to lead the way. We need to show the way. It should not necessarily take the upper echelon to demonstrate to us what to do or what is right. We all, in, in, you know, inherently we know what is right and we know what is bad or what is not right or what is wrong. So we all need to embrace that. If we, we, we operate in our society in such a way that we do the right things all the time, we don't throw waste indiscriminately and expect leaders to come and force us to do the right thing, I think we will have a, a greater society uh, at large. Doc, your comments on the viewers' um, Just, just a quick one on that. There's a general in you who said that leaders are supposed to solve problems for the wider society. And as we said earlier, leaders must sacrifice. At the end of the day, we look straight away, we are looking at the top. But what is the down doing as doing well? as well. That's the question. And that is where all of us need to. Yes. Let me take Isa. Isa from Tamale. Good afternoon. And welcome to the Leadership Facility Show. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. I'm very happy to be part of this program. You know, this program is a very important program. And I think that uh, it is something that everybody must listen to and must, you know, try to change their attitude to, you know, be disciplined. Because if you look at this country, I believe that uh, this topic is what we all need to develop. If you look at from the executive, you know, if you like from the president to the last person, you know, all of us are not disciplined. If you look at our workplaces, if you go there, nobody does the right thing on our rules. Wherever you go, it's in discipline here, in discipline there. So I think that it's an issue that has to be looked at very critically. And if that is happened, you know, this country is going to develop. If you have lived in abroad before, you know, if you go to abroad, you see what they do. You have to go to time. You have to report to work on time. You close at the right time. You know, whatever they have achieved in their various, you know, economies is, is because they have been disciplined. So I think that we too have to be disciplined in order to develop in this country. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And that is in overall terms, the objective of this program. It is to make that difference, that things we know, things we don't know or we never knew, we'll get to know, and those things that we know we were doing wrongly will change from that to impact our society positively. Doc, uh, linked to what the caller just said, what is it that makes us, if I say us, Ghanaians, Africans, Obey simple instructions when we travel out of our, the shores of our countries, our continent. What is it that makes us do the right thing? But when we are in our various countries, we don't do the right thing. But before you come back, uh, as a caller from Kumasi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Your name, please. I'm called Mr. James from Maki Kumasi, the Volta region. Oh, thank you. You are welcome to Leadership Presidency Show, Mr. Thank James. Thank you very much. But, but uh, please ask Doc for me that why, why is it that uh, when people, for example, they pick some people at leadership position, something like a board like this, only the chairman, only the chairman has power over every, everything. Is that not what is killing our society? Because whatever the chairman says, it, it, uh, it uh, comes to even schools, the headmaster. People with PhD and other things, first they go to, but they cannot contribute. Is that not the indiscipline we are talking of? People have taken over the role. 
uh, any position at all, the chairman, uh, they still got there. So please, these are where we are having problems because we have people with uh, PhDs and all this, and they are sitting on a board and they are afraid to talk. Is that not the indiscipline that, that we are talking of? All right. So this is where I have a great challenge for this, our nation. Thank you very much. Thank you to Doc. The in interesting thing he said here is that let's look at it from the corporate governance perspective. Yeah. You see, institutions are established and roles and responsibilities are uh, given. Most often than not, some people in high authority may attempt to usurp the power of quote unquote other members, other subordinates, or other team members. That's not supposed to be this case. And I, I share with him, it's a sign of indiscipline. If you go, even go to the financial sector, the reason for auditing is to ensure that people don't One go year, are here right. to the right things. Okay. So financial prudence, for example, mm -hmm. is a way of talking about financial discipline so that at the end of the day, things that we are marked to do and value for money yes. will be audited and okay. be adhered to. Okay. So this Interestingly, the show is inundated with calls every now and then. So uh, sorry to cut you. Uh, Samuel from Agboba, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome to the Leadership Facility Show. Your contribution, please. Thank you for it. It's very important. I even just sent a WhatsApp message, but I'm not sure you are open it. You see, going back to democracy in 1992, some of us predicted what is happening today, that we don't think democracy with its level of indiscipline everywhere will deliver to the expectation of Ghanaians. Am I justified? Despite the ease of uh, military governments, there were times and you don't see things that we see today. This society was clean to some level, discipline, and was adhering to some to discipline to some level. What do we see today? All right. Everything bad. Thank you. Thank you very much. What I want to, as the host of this show, what we have established on the show is that a problem identified is the beginning of solution to the, that problem. And that is why we have come up with this program, to take a step back and look at where we are going wrong and what we can do to effect that change or to make a difference in our lifetime. And so, in as much as history must guide us, we must also be reminded that the present offers us opportunity to effect the changes we want to see, so that in the future, or for the benefit of larger society, we can impact positively and make it the way we want to see. What Mahatma Gandhi said, let's be the change we want to see in our society. On this show, we are making that change, and you are part of that change. Let us all come on board and effect that change. Doc, I'll come back to you. But uh, black man, Kintampo, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. How is Kintampo yes. this afternoon? Uh, Kintampo is fine. We are, we, we, we are greeting you. All Hello? right. So please, your contribution. My contribution is now, I think, how the Ghana is going. We want to let this know. If we, they want to vote, if we, if we want to go to voting, if you go there with a gun, if you, if you go there with a gun, we fear you than the soldier, the police and the gun. So we want that. If you come there, if you want to vote, we want the militaries there. All right, thank you. Thank you very much for contributing to the program. Um, Doc? Yes. Uh, let's note one thing for clear, or for sure, that little things culminate into a bigger picture. So there's a saying, some adage that little drops of water make a makes, mighty makes a mighty ocean. Exactly. So leadership in itself and discipline should be seen as a change management process. Everybody must start today to sit back, do self-introspection, and be willing to sacrifice and adapt for the common good of society right. in future. Okay. We need look, to look at let it. me pick um, the last caller. Um, is it Simon from Liberia come? Yeah. Hello. Good, good afternoon. To good afternoon, Mr. Viewers. Forsen. Yeah. Good afternoon to you and your viewers. 
Good, good afternoon. Yeah, please. good afternoon, Mr. Forsen. Uh, please go ahead. Yeah, I, I want to do a contribution. Thank you. Uh, one problem with Ghana is this. Our leaders are not correct. And all Ghanaians, you see, we are all not correct. All Ghanaians, our, 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 our habit, our habit in this country, we need a complete revolution. Thank you. We need a complete revolution from the top to the down. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. I, we, we on this show will not call it a revolution. We call it a recalibration of mindset. A recalibration of our mindset that requires us to pledge to a certain or commit ourselves to a certain code of behavior that will ensure that any point in time that we wherever we find ourselves we should be able to put up the right behavior towards the sustainable development of our society on this note doc let's take the honor code for the leadership crisis issue and we shall be right back proud and firm African. I will take a stand. I will lead and be the change. Come and take my hand. For the safety, Hana, and welfare of my country and company come first. Always and every time. The Hana, welfare and comfort of the people I lead come next. My own ease, comfort and safety come last, always and every time. Viewers, welcome back again. It's been interesting conversation today. Our own comfort and ease must come always last, every time. That is the only way we can ensure that discipline prevails in our society. Leadership leads us to the destination that we all want. You and I have a role to play. For us to demonstrate our commitment to our developmental effort, we need to be very disciplined in our dealings. On this note, Doc, thank you very much for you. having you on the show. Thank you for having and, me. And uh, it's, it's amazing what we have been able to uh, uh, unravel today. And viewers, thank you for your contributions. Next week, we shall look at other aspects of leadership, basically dealing with leadership and goal setting. What are our goals? What results do we want to get? We'll look at that topic. Nice having you. Let's have a great um, rest of week and weekend. Bye.